Hey y'all, Daniel Aaron here, your guide to vibrant living. And this short story is absolutely 100% true, couldn't make it up. And the three-step plan that um, I'm going to outline for you from Jesus is one that I go into in more detail in our community and also one that I picked up on, it wasn't written this way, but I picked up on in the incredible book about Jesus called Lamb, the Gospel According to Biff, which as humorous as it is, also contains some very uh, historically accurate and uh, lining up components to our great hero, Yogi Jesus. Now, how I get this to you, it was Back in early 2000s, maybe 2002, something like that, and I was living in Holland. I'd gone to visit my friend David Wolf in London, and we went off on an adventure together. Well, it just happened that at the beginning of the adventure, I met a woman who was amazing. And from the moment we saw each other, we clicked, and we had just an incredible connection. And for the next five days, we were fastened at the hips, at the hands, and in other ways you might imagine. Um, really beautiful, beautiful connection. And, um, and it, was, it, was, it was passionate, and it was also deep, and she had shared with me some really important stuff about her life and how her grandmother who had raised her had recently passed and the sadness of that for her. And anyway moving things along the end of my UK trip is coming and so her and I are on our way back to London in fact we were staying at a hotel near the airport because my flight left the next day and it was our you know our last time together um, at least for that trip and we're staying in this little hotel and she's laying in the bed and I go into the bathroom and you know I'm brushing my teeth and then I come back out and she's laying there um, and then she sits up and she says something to me. And right away, um, I get the like tingly thing going on. Uh, and I, I, something's not right here. What's going on? And so she says something to me and I respond, but it doesn't quite sound like her. And I say something else and she responds, but also doesn't quite sound like her. And I'm scratching my head and then out of nowhere, because like, <laughs> exorcism and you know the funny word for it but dealing with interacting with beings who are different than the one that we know in that body that personality something I had never experienced before and barely had any awareness of so it just came to me on a whim I said um, who are you and she kind of looked at me and said you know who I am and then I sat with it for a minute and I said you're the grandmother I've heard about. In fact, at the time I knew her name and she looked at me and, and then this sort of very soft voice said, yes. And and I had like a little meltdown in my head in that moment because like how it happened, I don't know. How she came in, I don't know. How I knew that, I don't know. And then worst of all was what to do. So I had a little more conversation with her and I said, look, you know how much your granddaughter loves you and how important she is and you have to let her go. Um, it's time for you to move on, um, you know, to go back to, I didn't have the words for it then, but you know, to move on from this earth plane back to source light. And um, she said, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I want to be here and she needs me. And, so I said, yeah, I get that, you know, and life is good and still, um, you know, it's confusing for her for you to be here. And, you know, at the time, of course, I'm, I'm like flying by the seat of my pants. And then she says, no, I don't want to. And, and I said, well, with all due respect and with real love, you must go back to the light now. Again, I had no idea where that came from. And as I said it, the physical eyes closed and my friend you know, um, lay back down on the bed and then she started, uh, started, woke up, looked at me and we 
started talking, she had no memory. Right? And it was clearly, instantly she was back, she had no memory of it. It was an amazing experience for me, just in part because it took me out of my normal beliefs and that's of such value. You know, when life shows us that one of our beliefs isn't accurate or true, well, it opens up infinite possibilities in our lives. Now, the Jesus three-step plan goes like this, and um, this comes from the story of when he confronted Legion, one of the most, uh, a host of the most ferocious demons at all that were inhabiting this um, guy on the shores of Galilee. Anyway, um, when they got there, all of the disciples were really scared of this demon. He was nasty and sorry, he was throwing rocks at them. And Jesus came up to him. Everybody else said, no, no, let's just go away. You know, let's go. Um, and, and the first thing he did was say, what's your name, demon? And then they had this little joking interaction. And so the first rule is keep your sense of humor. The second rule is maintain compassion. Give love to this demon. And so as they went on, and had more interaction, and again, Jesus, you know, said, I understand, and it's difficult, and you want to be here, and then they got to the third rule, which is be 100% clear on your outcome, what must happen. And, and again, I didn't know any of this when I had my little, you know, experience in that hotel room and outside of London. And so then finally... Jesus was very clear with Legion and said, you must go. And then it was a very dramatic exit. Leave that story for another time. And so how does this apply to you, to me, to our own inner demons, our fears, our worries, our anger, those things that show up that we don't like? Well, same rules. One, have a sense of humor. <laughs> we have to lighten up about our fo foibles, right? Otherwise, they get even stronger. Second, love them. Right? Because no matter what things we do or believe that aren't resourceful, that hurt us in some way, there is a positive intention that underlies them. Every behavior has a positive intention. It might not be the best strategy, but there's a positive intention. So we need to love those parts of ourselves that um, seem demonic, that seem like they're getting in the way. And then at least, no, at least last, yet not least, is no your outcome and insist upon it so whatever our demons are again you know any of those survival instincts we need to be clear in facing ourselves and say hey whatever it takes I shall overcome I will overcome this part of my small self because it's not real it's not who I really am right? there is incredible power in light in truth okay Enough said. I hope that it has been entertaining, perhaps even better if it has been useful to you. I encourage you to say, how does this apply in my own life right now? And as always, if you have any questions or comments, let them fly and I will happily respond to them. Thanks, y'all.